So, fact-checking flat Earth. Is the Earth flat? Let's have a look. And I'm going to have to say, no, the Earth isn't flat. Yes, it is. That's my twin brother, Ranty. Now, he used to believe the Earth was flat. And let me tell you, well, actually, let him tell you why he thought the Earth was flat. Maybe you could tell us, what's the number one proof of flat Earth, Ranty? Yes, yes, move out of the way, move out of the way. Right, so, the number one proof for flat Earth is we see too far. From an elevation of six feet, close to 19 miles, we are seeing shore to shore. And we do. That's true. We do see too far. It's an absolute fact. The geometric shape of the of the Earth means that there is a distance to the horizon, except the horizon is always moving due to refraction. And because of that, we see too far, far further than we should do on a globe, especially when you're at a low level. Now, when I was a flat Earth, well, actually, I'll let Ranty tell you this part. What did you used to do, Ranty? Yes, yeah, so I used to go down to the beach all of the time and take photographs of Barrow in Furness and believe you me, you could see too far, further than you should do on the globe. From an elevation of six feet, close to 19 miles, we are seeing shore to shore. Yep. He used to go all the time down to the beach and he always used to see too far. And what he would do is he would post these images online and people would look at them and they would think, hmm, this doesn't conform to the shape of the globe. Therefore, the Earth must, by default, be flat, right? Kind of logical thinking in a little way, especially back then. So if you go back to 2015, 2016, 2017, and part of 2018, the P900 had come out at this time, and Flat Earth has had their little fingers on it all the time, going down to the beach and seeing these great observations. And the globe, although they had a response, it wasn't a very good one. See, their response was always, hmm, what's your observer height? See, the reason that this became such contention is simply because there was no real argument against the flat earth, no real proof, let's say, that could shine a light on why we were seeing too far. Now that was until in 2018 when a gentleman called Mick West put his earth curve calculator out and he included something called standard refraction, that's 7 over 6R. And what that is, that is basically showing you how the light reacts with an atmosphere and here on Earth, how it would react there. Now, this phenomena was known for centuries. In fact, sextants have it in their, in their manual. So you can actually see that this has been well known for a very long time, except it was never really needed to be known when it was globe Earth versus flat Earth, because let's be honest, who in the right mind thought that the Earth was flat? let's say 20 years ago? And the answer is nobody. It was only when a few people started looking into this and trying to put this information out that it might be flat with a few photographs that the movement started to gain a bit of traction. And because there was no real globe argument against it, i.e. If refraction hadn't been spoken about, flat earth flourished. And people like Ramsey, who used to go down to the beach and take lots of photographs and you could see too far, started to believe that the Earth was flat and tell other people about it too. And then in 2018, when the calculator came out, <clears throat> everybody on flat Earth thought this was a bit of a cheat, really, because any observation that you saw that was too far, they would turn around and say, we don't believe refraction. We don't think it's real. 
Ramsey was one of those. He believed, just like every other flat earther, that refraction was non-existent, that it didn't do what it was supposed to do on the tin. In other words, it didn't lift things up behind Earth curvature for you to see them. But how on Earth could you actually come back to the globe if, if you never had proof of that? If you could never actually demonstrate that this was actually happening? You see, you can't replicate the atmosphere in a, in a small room or even in a large room. I mean, you need many miles to do this to replicate what the atmosphere can do. You can bend laser lights into fish tanks and things like this to demonstrate it. Or you could use some butane to lift the image up from behind a cylinder. But realistically, they're not great. They're not great proofs. We needed something different. And in February of this, this year, a gentleman called Kevin Jackson put an image out onto Twitter who got it picked up and posted on a Facebook group that Ramsey actually saw at the, in around about, let's say, the end of February of this year. And when he analysed it, it showed a few things. It showed, more importantly, that there was definitive drop between Blackpool and Barrow in Furnace. Now, that was the two places that he used to film between. So how could this image that showed clear drop between Blackpool and Barrow and Furnace be real if all the times he was going down to the beach and seeing Barrow in Furnace at 18 miles away, shore to shore from a very low observation, how does that even work? So he was very confused for quite a long time. It took him a while to get his head around it. And then he realised, what if the globe was true? You see, he'd applied all of his logic and all of his flirt training to try and explain this away, and he couldn't. He tried everything. He couldn't do it. He reached out to Conspiracy Cats and Ruhif, and they analysed the image too. And we all came to the same conclusion that, without a shadow of a doubt, buildings of Barrow and Barrow in Furnace itself had definitely dropped in relation to Blackpool. So, now we have the proof. The proof is there is curvature down at the beach between Blackpool and Barrow. But when Ranty was going down to the beach, he was seen too far. Now, how could this, how could this happen? How could this be real? Well, it's logical. Refraction was therefore proven. Every time he went down to the beach and he saw too far, he was at a low observation. He was filming across water and refraction was playing a very big part in what he actually saw. Now, it's really difficult to try and go against your senses. I mean, as a child, you are stood by the roadside and they say, your teachers would say, look left, look right, listen. You know, to cross the road so you didn't get run over. And you're taught to trust your senses. And... When you go down to the beach and you see these buildings and you see these mountains and you see these far, far ships far away defying the globe, your eyesight's are telling you that you're seeing this, but realistically you're not. You're just seeing the light that's emanating from those objects as it curves around the, uh, uh, as it curves around the globe into your eyes. It's as simple as that. Simple but not simple, if you know what I mean. So, the number one proof for flat Earth is that you see too far. But, Ranty, with his years of uh, proof down at the beach showing all these great shore-to-shore -shore observations, was in fact actually taking photographs of refraction, taking videos of refraction and putting it out. And the Blackpool image taken by Kevin Jackson, and repeated, bearing in mind, by numerous people, including a somewhat flat earther called Bev, he went and replicated the exact same image. So, proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that the mountains in relation to Blackpool had dropped over the Earth curve. Therefore, proving refraction is real. So there we have it. Is the Earth flat, and are we fact-checking it? Yes, we are. We're fact checking it, it is not flat. The Earth is a globe. The fact we see too far is simply refraction. And Ramsey proved it.
grab the plus for empty. And I'll see you all in the next one.